Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics in the shed, gearing up for a quick session in the morning. Basically tomorrow our session is going to be the end of the run out tide and we're going to be fishing the three new Z-Man 2.5 inch grubs colours. So I've got one of each rigged on some rods here ready to go. So we're going to fish those, see if we can get a fish on each. I'm also going to give you a bit of background on each of those colours and why they are added to the range and also talk to you a little bit about how I rig and fish that Z-Man two and a half inch grubs. So let's finish gearing up. We'll get out there nice and early. All right, folks, how is this? An absolute glass out, picture perfect, beautiful morning. And we're out here to give these three new Z-Man 2.5 inch grubs colors a run. Going to see if we can get a fish on each color and basically talk to you about each color and how it came about as well so we're going to kick things off we've got a dropping tide dropping down to a low so i'm going to start off with a quarter ounce 10 tt headlocks finesse jig head and then as the tide drops out lower i'm going to lighten that presentation up and push up into a bit of a drain that we're fishing here so first cab off the rank we're going to give that dirty oil color a swim so you can see that even in that beautiful morning light if i was fishing midnight oil which we added the silver fleck to there'd be a lot of natural scale flash and glitter going on with that plastic what we've done with the dirty oil as soon as we released midnight oil people were like oh do one with a black fleck do one with a black fleck so this has a black fleck and a black glitter in it and the idea with it is, it's the, it's the opposite to Midnight Oil. Where Midnight Oil gives you that extra flash and sparkle of the glitter, this one basically absorbs the light and it, it's more dead in colour. So it's going to give you a, a heavier silhouette in the water. It's a, it darkens the plastic up, so it's a darker greeny colour. And that black fleck and black flake is going to give you a heavier silhouette in the water. So it's going to be brilliant, I reckon, in dirty water. It's going to be brilliant in low light conditions and it's going to be awesome when you know when the fish are a bit more finicky and they don't want that bling they want that duller sort of color i think it's going to be brilliant so like dirty water low light early morning late arvo but i also am in the weed a bit there so i also think it's going to be good when when the bite's finicky when the bite's a bit finicky if you're getting them on the midnight oil and you're getting them following and not taking or you can see the fish and they're not eating that midnight oil switch it up put this dirty oil on and i reckon it'll give them something completely different you've still got your motor oil base so you've still got that uv reactive quality but you can see there how much darker that plastic is and it doesn't have that natural scale flash and that of the midnight oil so it's going to be a good color probably you know deep water in the fresh and that as well deep water in the salt but Definitely, I'm going to love it fishing around weed. I like darker sort of colours around weed. Early morning, late arvo. And that when that water's dirty as well. So, we had some guys request that black glitter in that midnight oil. So, well, let's see what you guys can catch on it. I reckon you'll smash a few. Need to sneak myself into the gutter a little bit more here. And it's an absolute glass out morning not a huge amount of bait so hopefully fish are still active in this drain we didn't have a very big high last night so that would have probably been less fish moving into this drain on that big tide the night tide because it was a small night tide so hopefully there's some fish holding in here oh there we go flick to the bait that was there oh no we're up in the weed Got a bit excited first up in the morning. <laughs> there we go. Not a big one, but we'll take it. Hey, it is off. That's a good release. All right. Dirty all getting the bite. Just a pocket rocket flatty. Might have been just legal, maybe. 
but that's what, what we came to do, catch a fish on each colour. I like to fish that Z-Man 2.5 inch grubs with a few different retrieves and I'll generally fish it slower than a Slim Swims um, paddle tail, I fish them fairly quickly. So I'll just fish the grubs on a slow roll so you can just slow wind that plastic. Depending on the depth, you'll wind slower or faster or lift your rod tip higher or drop your rod tip to swim it lower. And you might want to pause every now and then and just let that plastic touch the bottom as well. Just make sure you're down and around that structure. If you fish a higher in the water column, you can swim it higher in the water column. So I'll slow roll it, a little bit of bait there. Uh, burn and kill is a good one if you're just getting into plastics or if you, you know, want to get the kids fishing that. Give it a few wines, give it a stop. Give it a few wines, give it a stop. Wind, wind, wind. One, two, three. Wind, wind, wind. One, two, three. Back on the bottom. Up off the bottom. Back on the bottom. That's a good way for kids for chasing a flatty and that sort of thing, but others, you'll catch other species as well. And that burning, the winding brings it up off the bottom, the kill sends it back to the bottom again. So it's a good way to just keep the kids down around the bottom if that's where the structure you're targeting. Hopping, classic retrieve and a very effective one. Generally just give the one, two, Wind the slack as the lure hits the bottom again, or one, two, three hops. Some people like to do one long hop and then drop the plastic back to the bottom. Often, generally, one hop, two hop, or some guys like to fish three hops. One, two, three. And that's hopping. Hop it up, let it fall back to the bottom again, boom, fish eats it. Very effective retrieve as well. And then the other one that I do a lot of is basically shaking the plastic. So I'll rip that plastic out there, let it hit the bottom, and then I'll fish it shaking retrieve. So basically I'm just, as I'm winding the plastic, I'm shaking the rod tip. And that, you'll see the plastic sort of dart all over the place like a, a bait fish or a prawn trying to get away. So that's an effective option as well. So that's the shaking, shaking the rod tip while you're winding the line. Oh, did you see that guy eat that? Oh, that was beautiful. Unbelievable. Did you watch that guy come up behind it? I really hope you guys got to see that. That was cool. He might bite me off because he scoffed it. Come on, buddy. Try and bring him into the net a bit green and get a shot at him if we can because he just snuck up behind that and just ate it. That was excellent. Oh, I saw him loom up behind it and I thought he's not going to eat it. He's not going to eat it. Boom, he ate it. Oh, come on, mate. oh no, he's just gone bonkers. <laughs> that was brilliant. That is a beautiful chunky flatty. He's chewed the leader up pretty well. Lucky we didn't lose him messing around with the net. That is a good fish. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that. That's cool. I want to get you there. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Ease up, Turbo. Ease up, buddy. Ease up, ease up, ease up. I don't want to knock you around. You're a good looking big chunky breeder, I reckon. Super stoked. There we go. Oh, there we go. Dirty oil. Dirty oil getting nailed by a nice laddie. And it scoffed it. Snuck up behind it like that darker silhouette and just drilled it there we go there's that dirty oil color smashed all right can we give that dirty oil a tick i think i'll be catching plenty more on that one z-man two and a half inch grubs dirty oil that darker silhouette good this early morning good around the weed it's going to be a great dirty water color as well my leader's all chewed up We'll send this one back. Come on, flatfish. 
he's up. Let's go. Away. Woo! <laughs> Brilliant. That was cool, guys. I'm pretty stoked with that. That was a great start to the morning. Nice to get out early. Make sure you get out early before there's too many boats out or too many people out on the water. If you're in the boat, it doesn't matter. Get out there early. <clears throat> get out there while it's a bit quiet. You can catch a few before it, before it gets busy on the water. Dirty oil. For all you guys that said to us, hey, like your midnight oil, but can you put a black fleck and a black glitter in there? High five. Well done. Got yourselves a little flatty and then a nice flatty. So what else have we got here? Oh yeah, let's give this guy a go. I've drifted right up into a weed patch here. You can see the patch of weed. So I want to fish the edges and in around those weed patches. Uh, not this guy. Let's go this guy first. So I'm dropping down a bit lighter. We're pushing up further into the gutter. You can see the weed on the surface here. So as we move up in the gutter, I'm going to lighten up the head weight. So I'm going to a 1 8 1 0 this time. <clears throat> and I'm going a classic variation on, well, a variation on the classic pearl color. Pearl is dynamite. It's extremely popular in most plastics. And this is a variation on pearl called Slam Shady. It is brilliant. No matter, since Slam Shady came out, we've had requests for Slam Shady in every different model. So here it is. You can see it in the light there. It's still a pearly base, but it's a bit more of a dull pearl, but it's got a glitter through it. So it gives it, again, like Minot Oil, gives it that natural scale flash, gives you that, that bit of sparkle, just something different to set it out from the crowd a bit. So that's Slam Shady on a 1 8 ounce 1 0 TT Headlocks Finesse. This will be a great plastic for, you know, brimming the canals, brimming the flats, you know, fishing the edges and stuff for flatties and the flats for flatties and stuff. You know, it'd be good in the fresh. It's just going to be a good all-round colour. Pearl takes on the colour of the water. And because this is kind of a bit more translucent -y, duller sort of pearl, it takes on that water colour even more effectively. And then that glitter just keeps it natural looking, really stands it out a bit from the, the crowd. If, you know, if there's jelly prawns around, small bait fish around, uh, those guys having trouble catching fish like tarpon and giant herring and stuff, getting them to eat when they're on the tiny bait, that's going to be a really good option. Uh, I'm going to fish it pretty much just as an all-rounder, but I'll, I'll fish it on those really bright days as well. Those bright days when the fish want a really natural presentation, bright days, clear water, oh, right up in the weed. I'll have to move us out, out of the weed a bit, but yeah, it's going to be a, a great option all-round option i would say so you'll see slam shady popping up in more and more of our models of plastics because it is a great variation on that popular and classic pearl color all right we're out nice and early you might be able to hear the boat noise it's starting to get a little bit busier people have woken up and gone holy dooly it's a glass out what am i doing sitting on the couch eating my brekkie i should be out fishing so Definitely going to get busy today, so we're going to give these guys a run early. Go and play with fishing tackle on the shed and get a bit of stuff sorted. So let's get this slam shady going. All right, one eighth head. So fish it a little bit slower again. Get it down where we want it on the bottom. A little bit of bait flick in there. And I'm just going to work this slowly. Give it time to get to the bottom. I'm watching that line. Cutting a V, boom, slack. Watching the line. It'll cut a V in the water. Very easy to see on these glassy days. So you can really keep that plastic bump on the bottom. Pretty quiet in the bait department this morning. So I'm taking note of any bait I see. More, more so than normal, even just one flick of a bait fish could mean that there's a, a predator in the area or you know they're getting chased spooked by something there's a bait fish over there so yep there we go there's a fish pocket rocket that is a little fella that's a good sign you want to see these little fellas means the system's nice and healthy how's that flathead will definitely just about eat something the same size as them so I'll be careful handling this little bloke a, because I don't want to hurt him, and B, I don't want to get spiked. 
and away. Well, there you go. That little guy was convinced it was food. Wouldn't mind one a little bit bigger on this colour though. A little bit of bait flicking around the weed there. There's a trick for you too. If you're fishing these sort of weed lumps, that weed lump is too shallow for me to fish, but I'm throwing up on top of it and I'm just twitching the grubs out over the top of the weed lump and then letting it fall down the face of it. And sometimes that'll excite the fish because they'll see it up there twitching and moving. And then when it drops down on the other side of the weed tower, they'll come out and drill it. Whereas if I let it fall to the bottom, it's going to foul up in that weed. So yeah, I'm just enticing a bit of you know showing the fish it's there and then sending it down to the bottom to them well, that was another microscopic pocket rocket that one tinier than the first one The bite can sometimes be tougher on these glassy mornings. That's the trouble. Sometimes the better day, the better the day, the tougher the fishing. So, like a few tips for you when you're fishing these really still mornings is just like keep the noise to a minimum. Throw long casts. You know, you might have to lighten your gear up to throw a really long cast. Get that presentation away from you a little bit. And, you know, slow the retrieve down as well. You might want to slow things down a bit, lighten things up to try and get that bite because the fish, the fish don't have that cover of the ripple on the surface from the breeze. So they can be a bit spooky, especially in shallow water. So I'll try and keep it quiet. I'll try and keep the casts long and the gear light, slow things down a bit. And also, I, when I'm paddling in and out of areas and that, I'll try and avoid paddling through where I want to fish because it is calm and it is quiet. You really don't want to dirty up your own water. So you don't want to spook fish and um, put an area down by traveling through it. So I'll definitely try and avoid moving through areas that I want to fish. Oh, there's a tap. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, that's not a bad little lizard out of half a metre of water. You can see weed, weed tower there, weed tower there. Sort of fishing in between those two weed towers where there might be a little bit deeper water. And so that flood is sort of sitting in between those two weed towers. They're eating the plastic right this morning. I'm not sure what he's well and truly scoffed that. Right down the gob. Don't bolt me off, buddy. There we go, that's a nice little floody. Slam Shady, 2.5 inch Slim Swims. So I'm happy with that. That's uh, We've got our couple of floodies on the Dirty Oil. We've got two microscopic ones on the Slam Shady before we got this guy. Pulled him out of that weed. I'm gonna end up sitting in that weed, but that's okay while we sort him out. Just like that dirty oil that was right down there. That leader was chewed up. I think this leader will be a bit chewed up as well. That's okay, because we're gonna change over to the next plucky after this guy. There you go. Got our flatty on the Slam Shady, and holy dooly. Don't know if you can see where that is, but that was like one little tick I've got the bite, and it is right down the belly there. We might keep one for a feed, so I'll put it on the measure. Let's see how we go. It looks like 43, 45. Yep, 45 or so. So it's a good eating size for Sherry and I for dinner. I've drifted up into a spot that I really wanted to fish, but I'll just push this into the weed a bit here. You can see weed there, weed there. And that'll be a nice little drain in between that weed. All right, let's get this guy off. You know, 45, good eating size fish on that Slam Shady. 2.5 inch grubs right down there. 
All right, there you go. You can see that there. That's that two and a half inch slam shady grubs. That flatty, that was a nice classic flatty take. Hop, hop, as it sunk, tick. He ate it and I set the hook. And you can see how far he ate it down. That scuffed up to there. So that was that far down inside that 45 centimeter flathead. So he thought that looks like food up around the weed, boom, eating that whole thing. So pretty stoked with that. I'll fix that leader up at home because we've caught our fish on that guy and that leaves us one color to go. All right, folks, our third color came about again from feedback from you guys, feedback from anglers out there. This is our third new addition in our new bag of tricks for the Z-Man 2.5 inch grubs, and that is called blood oil. So basically, bloodworm and motor oil have won a ton of fishing tournaments. M the motor oil, when it's, you know, a lot of the times dark conditions, dirty water, those sorts of things where you need that UV impact. The bloodworm is more about a very natural presentation for bright conditions, clear water and all that sort of thing. They cross over, you know, depending on the mood of the fish and that sort of thing, but that's the basic theory behind it. Motor oil is UV, bloodworm is not UV, and it gives you those two gun options for winning brim tournaments as well as catching a stack of different species. So guys have been mixing the two together and getting that motor oil UV to cross over into the blood worm. And they said to us, can you mix the two together and make us blood oil or make us this combination color? So here it is, it looks dynamite. The guys down south, Victoria, New South Wales have been smacking fish on it already. It's brilliant, natural greeny looking color with that UV. It's got that brilliant blood worm fleck in it. So that's that really, really fine fleck in a in a really fine glitter in a red and a green. So it's, you know, very insecty, buggy, creaturey. Uh, it's got the, those tiny glitter in those different colors create a really sort of natural look. And then the motor oil color as a base. So it's, it's a greenier looking plastic overall than the motor oil. And it's, yeah, it looks really cool. And it's got that UV as well. So because that tide's dropping out, I've got it on a one tenth ounce TT Nedlock's head. Yep, 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 yep. Little fella, I think. Oh no, got a little bit of weight to it. That's very cool. That's in no water. So shallow here. You can see it stirring up dirt on the bottom here. Just came out of that little bit of a hole there near that weed flat. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Whoa, not a bad fish. Come on, buddy. Yeah, that's not a bad flatty. He scoffed that blood oil colour. So that was Ned Rig fishing that time. Oh, don't want to be on that side of it. He's up, buddy. <laughs> That's another nice, nice flatty. Oh, he's throwing the lure. Trying to make us in a giant mess here, are you, buddy? So that's that blood oil colour. They've all been, when they've been eating it this morning, they've eaten it okay. He ate that down a fair way as well. Oh, we'll get him sorted anyway. So there we go. That was our Ned Rig. You can see it tangled up in the net there. One tenth ounce green pumpkin colored head. Matches up perfectly with that blood oil color. Two and a half inch grubs. Nice little flatty, getting towards 50. Good times. All right, folks, there you go. Just a quick one this morning out on the water, swimming those three new Z-Man 2.5 inch grubs colors. That 2.5 inch grubs is super popular and super effective. So a great plastic if you want to get out there and fish some plastics. Hopefully that also gave you a little bit of an insight as to where those three colors came from. And you can see a lot of angler feedback have led to those three new color additions to the range. Also, hopefully you picked up just a, a few tips as well on how I fish that two and a half inch grubs, and hopefully that helps you get out and get hooked into a few yourself as well. So all the best with the fishing. Cheers.